So in this video, I'll be showing you how I created my uh, fruit model here. Um, this is a render of it. This is like, the final finished thing. Um, and within my time lapse, which we'll just get into, uh, you'll see how I created it. Uh, this model is meant to be integrated in with the uh, glasses uh, that I created in the scene setting post, which I did uh, a while ago now. Um, and these are all meant to be integrated in together to set the scene uh, for the product. So without further ado, let's get into the time lapse. So um, from my intro there, uh, I basically said I was going to do a time lapse. I'm not going to do a time lapse, I'm just going to um, do a little commentary because I need to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So um, I basically copied this idea um, from a tutorial of YouTube, but I'm going to adapt it a little bit because um, in the initial um, in the initial um, tutorial, what the uh, the person used was a, a ball, um, and basically a ball um, just allows you to. Uh, subtract one shape from another so I've got so the sphere is now in the ball um, if I then add in a cube put that underneath the sphere um, if you'll let me, oh okay hang on um, put the cube in there like that and then lift it up it then creates like it then subtracts uh, a from B, um, if that's how it's described in here, subtract A from B, yeah, so overall using them two shapes I'm able to create this shape, um, and this is quite good, um, it does allow you to create basically what I want, what I want to create which is half of a, uh, half of a orange, um, however after doing it in here, if I uh, just go in and turn this off, turn this all back on, um, basically you'll be able to, so, sorry I've got all the displacement and stuff on, but um, what it's pretty much done is it's cut it off and these two act before uh, I merge them together by going uh, right click connect objects. Um, Basically, this face here was separate from the um, curved skin, I guess. So the, the orange face was separate from the skin. Like, there were two physical different objects. Uh, and this wasn't very good um, because I can't... Uh, as you can see, that edge there between the skin and the uh, flesh was very sharp. And I wasn't able to put that into a subsurface division and smooth off that corner. Because in a real world, in the real like life, if I actually had an orange slice cut like that, there would still be a slight bevel on the edge, and it just wouldn't be a complete sharp edge. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go make this object editable. Go into uh, this mode. Actually, I'm going to switch up into model mode, modeling mode get my loop selection grab all of them and delete uh, I think then if I go into the vertices mode I can then grab that and then I can hit close polygons there you go cool uh, yes yeah, so this is basically now allow me to do virtually the same thing with the ball, uh, however, it's all one object. So if I click it, this is physically all one object. Um, and hopefully, if I put it into a subsurface division, oh, or a cloning array, if I put this into a subsurface division, there we go. Um, I'm actually able to get a, a nice soft edge on there. However, that's a bit too much, so I think I'm going to do this back into back in the modeling section, go loop selection, select that, there we go, and then add a bevel on there, um, so if I put that to about, let's make that 
two centimeters and then within there I will add three subdivisions actually wait yeah let's make that even smaller let's make that one so if we go back to there you can actually see that this edge is now nice and soft although it's very it's very like jagged that we can sort that out with the subsurface division uh, like that and there we go and now it's all nice and smooth so yeah that, that's really worked well um, in basically this is basically the same process in which I took with doing the ball uh, however it's basically just made one object instead of two separate ones and then having to faff around with merging them together so this is now one object what I'm now going to have to do again because uh, it's a bit trickier is I'm going to have to go in with the sex selection here so I'm going to have to highlight all of this uh, and because this is now and now because this is one object so there's pros and cons to using the ball so the, with the ball obviously it made two different objects and I wasn't able to round off the corner like that with the uh, bevel tool that was a con pro with the ball uh, is that it automatically created two different surfaces so if I now, um, so now I want to add a different texture to the, uh, like this would be the flesh of the fruit. So to create that uh, with the ball, all I'd have to do is apply the texture to that one, this object, and then the skin to this object. But however, because these are one, one, however, because this is one object, I'm going to have to add a set selection. Um, and basically, a set selection. Um, allows me to select a certain number of polygons on a um, on a surface so for example so I just put a sex selection on this uh, face here of the object and so this is the same texture that I'm using and if I add them both there and there uh, move this one in front of the sex selection Put that selection there. There we go. Cool. Um, basically, what I had to do was put the initial texture that I wanted, so the orange peel here, um, onto the object first. It's now because it's editable, so I put that on. Then I selected the um, this front face here with the set selection. Um, I then add the texture, or I then added the texture on, and then within the texture tag, I then put that sex selection into the selection parameters here, and that basically tells it that um, that basically tells it that I only want this material to appear on that selected area, um, and that worked well. Um, however, now I've got something a bit another problem coming along here with the uh, with the way this is acting uh, and I haven't experienced this before so let's just play around with this And there we go. <coughs> um, so after a little bit of playing around, um, the breast projection is cubic. So there you go, got that nice there. The peel, it could be um, increased just a tad, uh, just because I've got some of the white parameter, uh, the white edges going around. Uh, so 101, 101 works quite well. Maybe 102, 102. Uh, and then I can alter the offset. There we go, much better. So basically, there the length. So I basically enlarged the length, overstretched it a bit for the surface it's meant to be on, and then with the offset, I was able to offset it so that it is now seeing centrally into the object. Um, so now, if I do a quick render, um, I'm not sure. Let's just go into this this scene, uh, and I will grab this the disk, the plane, and the HDRI. Uh, these are basic. This is the um, uh, 
this is the um, the objects in which I used. Um, so this is the objects I used for um, creating my scene, basically. Um, and then if I just align this properly with the floor, so it's the best view. Okay, so it's still not. So it's not. Okay. Oh, actually, I need to actually grab the sphere. There we go. So that's pretty much sitting pr uh, flush onto here now, but I've made a mistake. Um, one problem which I have been experiencing of is I've been grabbing the actual object itself and not the subsurface division, so everything goes out of alignment. So if I grab the subsurface division. Sit that close to the floor, rotate. There we go, and then E again, and then I'll just shove this back down. There we go, that's sitting perfectly on the floor now. If I just come to here, just quickly and actually wait, there's my background. I will rotate this. Just like that, and then render this out. And so there we go. Uh, this is the final project uh, product. It actually looks really good. The luckily enough, uh, I've had plenty of time to play around with all the materials here, um, and the actual image itself is really good. Um, I'll just go into the actual materials and show you what I've done to them. So the color channel uh, in the color channel, sorry. I basically added a layer system, so with the layer I've added the image, and this was the original image. I then added a hue, saturation and lightness um, effect, and then the brightness, contrast and gra uh, gamma. And that's basically allowed me to contrast it perfectly with the colour of the bottle. Uh, in addition to this, I've also added a little bump texture to the surface of it. Although the image is pretty good itself, um, actually having a little bit of extra bump on there will make it look even more realistic. Uh, and this material is also uh, reflective, uh, so 100% reflection. The specular strength is down to 5, uh, 20% and it's got a 5% roughness. And then this is overall got a 5% strength on the material and that gives that, um, that render. The skin is... The skin is okay. Uh, I'm not massively happy with the skin, and it's it's proving to be quite difficult. Um, but yeah, so this was 75%. Uh, so yeah, it's got reflection. Sorry, 75% reflection, 50% specular, 20% roughness, and an overall 5% strength. And then the color, it's just a plain old orange texture, uh, plain old orange color. Uh, and it's got a bump texture as well to kind of create those little pits that you see. Uh, and this has uh, two noises, which is that's made up of. So it's got a global, a really small global scale. So if I just bump this back up to 100, but it's, it's kind of like a cellular kind of noise. And when that's put down really small, um, it kind of creates that like, kind of pitted texture that you can see there. Um, and it looks it, it, it looks pretty good um, and then on top of that got another kind of noise to add a bit of randomness um, this basically makes it less uniform and more random which you would see in organic material so that's pretty much it for this um, for this section of the modeling um, I'm going to continue on with 
modeling a blood orange and then also a grapefruit uh, and then I think I'm going to put all of these together with the bottle and then I'm going to also experiment as well with the glass to see how it all looks together um, but that's pretty much it so thank you very much um, I'm going to end it with a little still of the fruit with the bottle uh, just for you to see what that looks like together uh, and yeah so that'll do it so thank you very much for watching and stay tuned